Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to Black Knight Gaming. We're here today with a three and a half skull battle on a polar biome, fielding the, uh, well, bountiful rewards of a couple good missions and, uh, well, what can be found scavenging the black market with, I think we have right now, 73,000 sea bills left in the bank, and all of our mech parts have been sold, all of our scrap and unwanted items have been sold, so we need a good payday. And let's hope to let's hope to uh, pick up some good mech parts while we're at it. So we are now fielding um, quite a good lance. So we have the Annihilator coming in with uh, twin Ultra AC fives, twin Ultra AC tens. We have a Highlander coming in with uh, well lots of good Gauss rifles. Um, and these Gauss rifles did not come standard, by the way. These each were I think around three million C bills. Um, off of the black market. I've kind of been picking them up over time uh, when I've spotted them, uh, which is very nice. We also have a Thunderbolt and a Marauder coming in here, and the Marauder uh, was what I had spent most of the money for our company on. The Highlander, uh, an SLDF Highlander, by the way, uh, was actually a mission reward from our last campaign mission in the previous episode. So with all of that out of the way, let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so we've dropped in, and let's go ahead and start moving up. Now, one of the drawbacks to the superior firepower that we're now bringing along with us um, is that we, uh, well, we run the risk of being basically outpaced in terms of initiative every single fight, uh, which is, well, very much less than ideal. Um, but you know, on the other hand, every time we we do land a hit, it should be devastating. We are going in for the uh, sort of Steiner Scout Lance sort of style, um, and I am hoping to pick up. There's a Cyclops variant. I, I forget if it's the Q or the Z off the top of my head. I think it's the Z. I want to say, uh, but you know, it's a 50/50, so it means I probably got it wrong. Uh, but anyway, there's there's a Cyclops variant that um, gives you. Basically, everything gets one additional initiative, and that is our next goal if we do find it somewhere or if we uh, come up against one. That's an immediate salvage priority because you know, having assaults go at initiative two, heavies go at initiative three is quite powerful. So the Jaeger mech I'm not really too worried about here as much as I am about taking those six medium lasers from the quick draw. Uh, so we will, I think, well, we're using our Marauder. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, we don't have Cold Shot Mastery, but we still have a 12% chance to hit the head. And if we do land that headshot, that should take that mech out in one go. Uh, and we don't quite land that hit. So we'll move up the Thunderbolt, and I think what we're going to do here for this Lance is just push right through this quick draw, and then send something up for this 55 tonner and use the Highlander's Gauss rifles to take long range pot shots at these two mechs. Um, this is a three and a half skull mission. I would not be surprised at all if we do see reinforcements here. Um, after all, you know, this is what? That's a heavy, there's a heavy, there's. Oh, that's a dragon. So there's three heavies and a medium. It's not quite as much resistance as I would expect off of a three and a half skull contract. Uh, although, you know, they do have some variability, and we are taking a bit of a pounding on our, on our Marauder right off the bat. This is a, well, it's kind of going to show what we were kind of talking about there, which is we don't strike first. So because we don't strike first, we have to strike hard. And that's what we'll hopefully be doing right here. So coming in with the Highlander and just pounding Gauss Rifle and PPC hits into this quick draw, uh, we do get a head hit. Although, well, it must have been off of the snub PPC, because if either one of those Gauss Rifles had landed on the head, um, this mech would not be standing anymore. So we will move up the Annihilator, and the Quick Draw is proving remarkably resilient to our fire. It does have decent damage mitigation, but let's go ahead and see if we can fix that. So pounding in with the Annihilator, uh, we do destroy his side torso, and that mech somehow is still standing, so I'm a little bit disappointed uh, with our rate of damage output from this Lance. Uh, considering the amount of money we put in, and one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that um, during the campaign, everything steps up as you complete missions. So you know the planets that were two, two and a half skulls before are now two and a half, three, three and a half skull uh, planets. So they offer you know four and a half, five skull contracts. If we can't burn through a three and a half skull contract, 
uh, without taking significant damage, we're kind of in a bit of a rough place. Uh, which is why, you know, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now, which is running a three and a half skull mission first. We have a slightly uh, less intense mission that we can take um, if we so choose after this. And I think right now we'll just move up the Thunderbolt, try to finish off this quick draw. Well, or since whenever you leave um, something for the AI that there's a downed mech as an option, they will stand it up first. So we could potentially take in a free shot at one of these other mechs. Uh, but I think let's just see if we can end this mech and uh, move on, right? So uh, we are able to core that mech out. That's just, it's a quick draw. We've had quick draws for quite a while. It's nothing fancy, nothing really worth uh, spending amounts of time and effort salvaging. So there's at least one other heavy um, coming in with that reinforcement lance because something moved and it cycled initiative back over to us without anything that we can see having moved. So now we'll come in with this Marauder and Marauders have what's called a Lance Command mod, and this gives you some benefits to your entire Lance. It also increases your called shot accuracy. So this Marauder is basically our uh, head capper right now. Uh, we'll be trying to just take Max out um, one headshot at a time, and unfortunately we haven't really been able to land enough concentrated damage to do that. So we, we missed the first time over here on the quick draw, and it looks like we only got light scatter again uh, no, that's a pretty solid hit. So we hit with one of the Snubnose PPCs, but those things do behave kind of like shotguns um, more than more than anything else. So let's see, if we move down this way, we can get within range of everything on that dragon, or we could fire in one more time at that Jaeger mech. So I think, well, yeah, that's what we want to do. So we'll bring the Annihilator up and around, and I think we will fire in here at this Jaeger mech with everything. So let's see if we can just tear him to pieces. Uh, we do get an ammo explosion, and that mech is taken out by pilot injury. So, in addition to being able to just, uh, oh, there's an assault mech on the field. Uh, Alright, so in addition to being able to take mechs out through, you know, killing the uh, pilot when you land a hit on the head, you can also uh, basically make it a viable strategy to go for injuries from hitting the head with lots of small caliber uh, weaponry, so whether it's missiles or things like Snubnope's PPCs that have scattered damage, uh, it is a viable strategy that get, gets better the more accuracy you have on those cold shots. So we just rip right through that right hand side of the dragon right there, really showing off the uh, well, the damage potential of this Highlander, and unfortunately we do want it to be more in the front line than it is right now. Our Thunderbolt, as we proved last mission when we lost that very valuable uh, double heat sink right at the end there, uh, it can hold up but only so much. I mean, the Thunderbolt is a very admirable uh, mech, but it's basically a worse version of a Battlemaster, right? So the Battlemaster is the uh, assault mech variant that at least feels most similar to me, um, and it would be far more resilient to those uh, sorts of beatings. So I think what we'll do right now, we'll move up the Marauder, and we'll come in with a precision strike on this dragon. We could go for the head. Alternatively, we could try to leg this mech. It doesn't really matter right now, because simply taking the called shot will um, slow it down to initiative one, and I think we'll just go for the quick and dirty kill. Uh, after all, we don't really want another dragon. We have one already with some specialty equipment. So getting another GR DRG-1N really doesn't add anything to uh, what we're building right now. We're looking for assault mechs. We're looking for uh, specialty equipment that admittedly will mostly buy off the black market, and that's kind of expected. Uh, but, you know, anything is better than nothing. So there's a 75 tonner. Uh, man, I wonder what that is. PPCs might be a Marauder, unless I'm getting my tonnage wrong, but I think the Marauder is a 75er. Let's see if I can take a look. Nope, I can't do that right now, so a little embarrassing, I don't know that, but uh, Sail of V. So we'll fire in here at the Griffin. Not the best accuracy, but it's also not our heaviest armament. Um, so right now I'm just trying to strip evasion off of that mech, and if we do take that mech out, then we deny these two mechs visibility, and right now they're using the Griffin. Uh, to take, well, pot shots at us from outside of our ability to return that fire. And there is, unfortunately, an injury coming in on Glitch, which I'd really definitely hope to avoid. That's just one missile plinking in for three damage, but enough, uh, enough contact to count as a head hit, uh, which is really unfortunate. And we've kind of done some poor maneuvering here on the Highlander. We really are just not where we need to be. Uh, to engage with the enemy well, and I think well, we can't even come down this side, so let's go ahead and move back over this way. Uh, we're out of range for everything uh, except for those two Gauss rifles, so we'll come in 
and we'll save our precision strike for the annihilator which is close enough to launch its full armament uh, at that griffin so structure exposed uh, this mech is now unsteady and we, we landed two crippling hits one on the left leg one on that left torso and the annihilator should be able to come up and finish this mech off uh, unless we get really unlucky so we'll go in and we could go for the ct but i'd almost rather go for that side torso guarantee to uh, minimum take out some of its armament and we just pile in way too much damage for that poor little griffin to take so we're still in combat because they're on sensors but we should get a small respite uh, from taking just crippling amounts of fire uh, from those mechs that are outside of our ability to return that fire and now maybe it's not the full lance maybe we'll um, still have that yep that's a marauder moving up into range but not actually uh, firing which is nice I think we do have a range finder um, on the th Thunderbolt, do we? Nope, that's just a standard head. Something in here has a rangefinder, it might be the Annihilator. Um, but in any case, that's why we were able to see so far and potentially get um, good shots at them when they can't at us. Uh, I really am tempted to keep this Highlander back here and just keep uh, firing in double Gauss rifle. Really no need to expose this mech to damage, uh, even though it could take a considerable beating with 1700 armor. So let's go ahead and take that shot unless is it worth going in with a precision strike? 5% chance to hit the head. It's really not spectacular, um, but let's go for it. Uh, why not? We'll slow down the Marauder um, at the very worst, and we deal some good damage. It looks like something in on the leg, yep, and on that right torso. Uh, it's good solid damage, and that Marauder is priority number one for us right now, so we can move up our own, and only within, well, barely within range for that Gauss. So let's take that additional shot, strip that one remaining uh, piece of evasion from that Marauder. Well, unfortunately missing there with a 70% chance to hit, which is kind of a disappointment, uh, that particular shot. But now we'll move up the Annihilator, uh, well within range, great accuracy, and we're running a little bit low on resolve, but I want these mechs dead so we can hopefully scavenge a Zeus. Uh, I think we do have at least one part uh, from the second, uh, the second deployment on the Archer mission from the last episode. So let's aim for that right torso, hope to uh, rip off at least the PPC, medium laser, uh, and a large laser in that torso section. So if we get lucky, we can rip that off, and we do. Uh, not quite enough damage in there to take that mech out. Um, and because the Mar Marauder 3D is strictly worse than our own uh, SLDF Marauder model, we don't really care too much about capturing that mech. So we've taken a lot of damage, mostly to that right arm. So let's go ahead and left face to the incoming lance, especially that Zeus, which could really just, well, it doesn't really have as much uh, uh, as much of an armament as I was expecting. We've already taken out a fair amount of their firepower, but let's go ahead and fire into that Marauder, see if we can knock him over, uh, and we do. We unfortunately don't get the kill, but that'll be a second pilot injury, which is nice. So a head hit, another thing like that, will stack us up to three, although we might need four. This is not, a, uh, not the worst pilot I've ever seen. Um, that is one of the nice things about something like Rogue Tech, it shows you how many pilot injuries they can sustain maximum. And that Thunderbolt, really just taking more damage than I would like, we will rotate him uh, back farther during this turn, because he's just, I mean, yeah, okay, so the left leg taking a beating, the left arm and right arm both uh, taking just an absolute beating. So let's go ahead and, you now we can move him back through the trees. It's hard to get two evasion pips and still fire, but I want to keep him in the trees for that damage mitigation. You know, the first thing we should do, I think, is let's move up the Marauder, and let's uh, let's take a, a nice shot in here at the CT of their Marauder and see if we can finish that mech. So that that one mech is down. Now it's it's just the Zeus, well, just the Zeus, uh, just the Zeus, Centurion, and Assassin. So let's, uh, well... Okay, which side is less damaged? So the right side is now less damaged because both arms are damaged, uh, but the legs, the right leg is fine, and I really don't want to lose this armament. So let's just go ahead and sprint you out of here. We've learned our lesson trying to push our luck, and that Zeus uh, shooting at the Annihilator and landing quite a bit of, of damage, landing the AC-5, landing the large laser, and some missile fire. Um, this is why we might need some time before we go for another... Uh, mission. If we lose this right arm, we lose an Ultra AC-5 that I don't have the funds uh, or parts to replace, which is uh, definitely less than ideal. So let's go ahead and come up here in left face, uh, getting as close as we feel comfortable doing. And the question we have to ask ourselves now, if we go for a precision strike, 
on this Zeus, how do we want to take him down? Uh, low chance to hit the head. We want parts though, so let's see if we can leg this mech. Uh, we do risk enough damage coming in to just core it out completely, and we damage that right leg, that, that Zeus does fall, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, use the Marauder or something else like that to take out that other leg uh, on the next round. So, although we do still have Decker left uh, with the Highlander, but if we take a look at this Zeus, a lot of scatter damage coming into those side torsos and potentially uh, decrease the amount of salvage we can get and that left leg is perfectly fine so Decker with the Highlander we could take a we could take a shot 30% chance to hit we would need to land both and even that might not do it uh, or we could shoot in the assassin not the best accuracy the centurion okay so that's our shot right there we'll we'll worry about the Zeus next round let's worry about the centurion a little bit for now uh, pounding two shots in, one of which finds CT uh, on that Centurion. There's a uh, truly wonderful shot there. And, well, both those mechs are moving at three. We could have potentially done a precision strike just to slow them. Uh, I'm taking more fire on the Annihilator than I want, and this is why our next mission, we have to have this Highlander up in the front lines too, just to spread the damage around a little bit, because, uh, man, I just, we have way too many valuable pieces and we need a little bit more experience on our pilots before we're really able to make great use of it. But our left side is holding up for right now, um, and because of that, we can go ahead and move in. Well, so neither one of these is firing again this turn. Let's see if we move the Thunderbolt up. It is a risk. Uh, it's definitely a risk. But we could try to move in here. Right side face? Yeah, right side face and go after that Centurion. There's not very much remaining on the CT, so we could potentially take him out or make him easy for someone else to take out. There is structure exposed there, it's a question on what, and unfortunately it is the left torso. Uh, so the Marauder, I think, now will come in, and the Marauder has the best chance with cult shots to focus damage where we want. 51% uh, chance to hit that leg, which has a little over 200 points total, so we would potentially be able to reach that, those snub PPCs coming in clutch here. So let's go ahead and fire in there, see if we can take this mech out. Uh, we do land at least the uh, snub nose PPC, well, at least the Gauss on that, but the Zeus is unfortunately back up, able to take another round of fire, which I'd hope to avoid. Uh, all of that coming in on the Annihilator, and thankfully most of the larger weapons missing. Um, so we need that mech down now. Um, it, we can't afford to take much more damage, or we'll start losing. Uh, things we can't afford to replace. So the Highlander or the Annihilator. I think what we'll do, uh, let's see, our Marauder is mostly healthy. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll move one, we'll still maintain that leftward facing for right now, and uh, I think we'll come in shooting at the Zeus. And the idea here, well, hmm. We have turns before this thing will fire again. Let's go ahead and shoot in at the Centurion. Uh, slow it down to initiative two, so the assassin will go first, and then we'll get a shot anyway. Um, coming in for that left torso, trying to pull this mech out, easily able to put in enough damage to do that. Uh, the reason I made that decision is because I, I don't want to risk coring out or destroying this Zeus more than we have to, and we do need to get rid of these two medium mechs. Uh, well, not well, not anymore. <laughs> we do need to get rid of that last medium mech before this fight is over, so we'll come in with the Highlander landing those twin Gauss rifles, hopefully. Uh, left arm destroyed, some good damage there. It looks like CT, yep, 35 structure remaining. Um, and we can go ahead and shoot and scoot here. Uh, it's far too late for this Highlander to actually get involved in the frontline fighting, but yeah, just best practice anyway. So the Annihilator taking even more fire to that left side and Archangel taking a head hit. So we might have to rest a little bit between deployments, which is not good because we're facing that um, that red line for our finances, but now we can come in with either the Thunderbolt or the Marauder. I think the Marauder uh, coming in with that better aimed shot, and we'll uh, we'll take that precision strike right here. Look for that leg. See if we can take this mech out. And both legs are destroyed. We might have just salvaged a Zeus, uh, which would be phenomenal. Although, to be honest, I might want to sell it at this point because we need the cash uh, pretty badly. So. We'll come in with the Thunderbolt, plenty of time to deal with using those precision strikes on other things, but just in the spirit of putting this uh, medium mech out of its misery, we do core it out and we'll be right back with the mission rewards screen. So here we are coming in with uh, 738,000, which <laughs> as you guys can see does put us back in the black for a little while. 
Um, and let's see what pieces we can scavenge from this. So, two pilot injuries, definitely less than ideal. Um, but good experience. So, let's see, two salvage might be enough. We have one Mad 3R piece, and we have, it looks like, yep, we have one Zeus piece already from the last mission, and we can scavenge two here. So, uh, that should bring us up to having another 80 tonner. It's a relatively light assault mech, but hey, it's, a, it's an assault mech nonetheless, right? So, you know, I'll take it. I'll certainly take it over uh, over not getting anything completed, and we can always sell it too to keep us in the black. So at least we have some depth now to the company. Um, if we, well, for example, if that thunderbolt takes another internal hit, but we need to do another mission, now at least we have the option. Uh, so we will be right back. I think we'll rest up a little bit, but we'll be back with another mission in this same episode. All right, so we're back and we're pushing the brakes a little bit on the difficulty here, dropping down to a two and a half skull battle, just hoping for an easy payday. Um, same Lance, uh, same pilots, we're just basically trying to get a little bit better pilot skills. I'm hoping for Tactics 9 uh, on these guys. I think that, uh, is it 9 or 10? One, either Tactics 9 or 10 gives called shot and mastery, which will really uh, increase the amount of damage we can do by head capping those mechs so effectively, especially with the Marauder uh, here once we have the ability to do so. But, uh, you yeah, know, you guys know the drill, let's just uh, go ahead and jump right in. All right, so we've dropped back in, and as our new lance composition kind of stretches its legs and we get used to how these mechs uh, play, we've learned that the Highlander, while it does have those wonderful long-range Gauss rifles, does need to be uh, up closer to the action in order to take some of the punishment away from the Annihilator, uh, and the Thunderbolt, which is really starting to struggle with the uh, higher difficulty missions, the amount of damage output uh, coming in from the enemy, especially when they focus fire with some of those larger weapons, so at least three things shooting at us. There's a dragon, there's what looks like either a Shadowhawk or a Phoenixhawk, Phoenixhawk, uh, and there's something unknown and something else unknown? Was that initiative three or two? It was hard to tell, it was only up there uh, for about half a second here, so it could have been either, and I think that would have been three, otherwise it would have switched over to us taking the first turn. So let's go ahead and move up the Marauder, and, well, Okay, so we have vision over everything now. There's two Phoenix Hawks, there's an Assassin, and a Dragon. Let's go ahead and take a Precision Strike on this Dragon. We don't have the best chance to hit him in the head, uh, but that's not really what I'm trying to do here. I want us to be able to pound in as much damage as possible uh, before he can go. So let's see. We can't quite get within range of that one uh, solitary medium pulse laser, uh, the last of the little secret goodies I got from the black market before starting up this episode, but uh, we do have range of the large laser and the snub PPC, so let's go ahead and fire in, and that's a lot of orange, and we are able to take out that dragon uh, on round two, the first round of full combat, with just half our lance, so that's the sort of kills uh, that we need to be able to do here uh, as we get up to the higher difficulty missions, so let's take a look at our accuracy, horrible, horrible, and relatively okay. So we'll take the, <laughs> we'll take the relatively okay for right now. We could do a sensor lock, but those Gauss rifles have enough uh, chance to hit that I'd rather just try to get the damage in. Uh, and we do in fact land both of those, um, ripping open that mech and actually landing a bit of a head hit. So this is part of why I love snub PPCs. They deal a lot of damage, um, especially the, um, the plus damage or minus heat variants are just wonderful. Um, and they spread enough that you can still get the occasional partial head hit, which we got right there. Um, only one of the prongs, I guess, or uh, pellets, if you could call it that, of that uh, PPC. And I don't think we need our full firepower to take this mech out. So let's just see how well half can do. Uh, there is exposed CT, so if anything lands from that UAC-10, it should be enough to do it. And because I said that, uh, that Phoenix Hawk is still alive. If we had just fired in with another UAC-5 or UAC-10, uh, we would have been able to take that mech out of the fight. So, you know, this is why we uh, playtest, right? This is why we stretch our legs with you know, three and a half, two and a half skull missions before we go on to, I think the next campaign mission might even be four skulls. Uh, we definitely need better pilots before we can get that. We're, we have the equipment, um, we have the mechs to do it okay. Um, our problem right now, that Zeus that we just put online, is a nice mech, don't get me wrong, uh, but it's a nice mech that's currently stock. And in order to make it really effective, we'd have to pull off this armament right now from our Thunderbolt, which 
it's doable. We, we, I mean, we'd survive, but we're basically picking which one of those mechs um, is truly usable um, and can, can put out a decent punch at the moment, which is not what you want to do. You want to have two or three solid backup mechs, which we, uh, well, we still need to build up to. There's no shame in that. It's just the reality of it. And our Marauder, well, I think we're actually going to, well, so this is always my problem with sensor locks. So we get rid of two evasion charges, which is nice, but you know, we have three coin tosses to deal damage, so let's just go ahead and take them. Um, <laughs> a bit greedy there, and well, but this is what I'm talking about, right? So we strip some evasion, uh, but we landed a good scattering of damage all over this uh, mech, which is not super useful. You want concentrated damage anyway, um, but it could have been way worse, and now we can come in, uh, well, okay, so if we do a precision strike, those Gauss Rifles could do crippling damage here, and I think that is what we'll go for. Try to take out this Phoenix Hawk. Uh, landing one or both of the Gauss Rifles, hard to tell, but that Phoenix Hawk was just completely obliterated. Uh, and it looks like we might not even have to deal with reinforcements on this drop, which is a bit surprising, but because of that, let's just go ahead and uh, fill this Assassin with lead here. So 95% uh, chance, 95% chance, and let's see what we can do. Because that assassin is down, the enemy units are down, uh, and because that was so quick, we might even do a third mission. But for now, we'll be right back with the mission reward screen. Alright, so here we are, another 700,000. We did have to give up some scavenging rights to get it, uh, which is unfortunate. But another good bit of XP coming in, um, and let's see, the dragon. We don't need another dragon, which is why, you know, I, I well... I guess what we can do, we can go ahead and uh, make this dragon and just go ahead and sell it and just get more uh, more money in the bank because we still are working back up our nest egg here, which at one time, you know, was up to, I think when I sold everything, I got us up to around 10 or 11, no, more than that. Well, it's hard to say, I was buying things, selling things kind of not all at once as I realized how much the company needed to go, uh, but, you know, we'll be right back with hopefully another quick little skirmish battle before this episode is over. So here we are back once again, uh, fighting, well, very thematically against the Oregon Directorate, and we're taking a recovery, which will be a bit of, uh, well, spice to the sort of missions that I tend to do uh, during these episodes. And it's on a desert biome, so we'll run a little bit hot, but that's alright. Three skulls, I don't really anticipate any significant challenges here, just once again trying to get as much uh, experience as we can for these pilots before we go back to the main campaign, which... We did just get the prompt to go back for the War Council event at Weldry, so we should be following up with another actual uh, campaign priority mission here relatively soon. I might run a couple, well, maybe one more episode of uh, sort of filler, I guess you could call it, as we get up to Tactics 9, maybe even Gunnery 9 too, uh, for these pilots, just whatever we have uh, enough experience points to really pile into. All right, so we've dropped in, and we're looking for a lost memory core, uh, which is over here to our northwest. And we have a very interesting set of terrain to deal with here today. We have a big ravine, and unfortunately, because of my, well, my habit for pulling jump jets out of mechs, especially heavy and assault mechs, we have to go right through the ravine with no real other options. We could come up and around this left-hand side. Uh, it would take a little bit longer, but that would get us a bit of a flanking position. Alternatively, if we just rush through this corridor, then we can split to the left and right uh, on our way to the objective. So hopefully they don't have too much mobility. If they're jumping all around us, they'll have elevated positions, easy flanking, uh, as we wind our way through these canyons. Um, on the other hand, we do have the potential for some uh, concentrated firepower as we exit these ravines all in one local place. Um, and able to just put a big hurt on anything that we find. So I think we will bring the Thunderbolt actually up onto this ridge for right now. Uh, we'll have to come back down off of it, but I just want the vision. That's another Zeus. Uh, so we already we already have one, I guess, but yeah, why not both? And I think we may also move the Marauder up here. Well, yeah, so that, that might be nice, because the Gauss Rifle and the Snub PPCs all are longer range, and what I'm debating doing is, well, I want the um, I want the Annihilator to be supported, so we will just move the Highlander up um, with the Annihilator for right now, and I guess our idea is to kind of shear off here uh, to the right, use this elevated position to get um, a nice 
well, firing bonus down at the Zeus and sort of do a flank overload. So this is the uh, center point of each lance and we're just going to be shifting, uh, crushing down on their left wing, I guess you could call it, uh, if we want to get into sort of pseudo infantry tactics here. And just uh, pushing more fire into this Zeus than it can handle before uh, swinging around to actually finding and capping the objective there. So uh, coming in, landing the medium laser, landing the PPCs, but a lot of damage mitigation. So guarded and uh, entrenched maybe, is that the other one? I always forget, it's entrenched or bulwark, this out of the other. Um, but we do have, okay, so we have sight now on a commando. Not great accuracy there. I think the best decision is just to keep pounding into this Zeus. Uh, and we land a big shot from that Gauss rifle, able to pull off the right arm of that Zeus already. Um, and now it's, uh, well, okay, so taking a little bit of scattered return fire, the Thunderbolt mostly fine there. Uh, we are in the cover with these trees, which is a 20% damage reduction. And unfortunately, we aren't really in the right position to respond. So, well... Okay, so going through this canyon would take a couple turns. Alternatively, we could come up on this left-hand side and sort of split their attention. So right after I do that whole fancy, you know, flank overload this, infantry tactics that, we will just completely make a new plan on the fly. Uh, that's a cataphract. Uh, ooh, that could be very valuable salvage. I think the 1X has some specialty electronic uh, equipment. Let's see if we can see it. Uh, should be in the head? No. Okay, so we can't see what's inside this mech. Well, no, we can. Maybe it's hidden in one of the torso pieces. Uh, okay, I don't know. I thought it was the 1X. It might be a different cataphract that has um, basically electronic warfare equipment, which would be uh, very nice. Um, make us harder to hit and, and all that. It's kind of like the Raven, except on a much heavier mech, uh, which I find more useful. The Raven, by the time that you can get it in the Flashpoint campaign, um, by the time I feel comfortable running that mission anyway, is always a little bit light for the uh, sort of skull ratings that you're going against. That cataphract building a lot of heat. We are in a hot biome. It might be worth looking into getting some of those Inferno missiles uh, if we can afford them, but uh, I'd rather just build up a bit of a nest egg again first. And now we can, well, we can keep splitting their attention. So let's move further around with the Thunderbolt. Uh, unfortunately moving out of cover, but next turn we can kind of cycle back this way. Uh, I moved out to get these three evasion pips here because, well, Staying moving is staying alive in this game oftentimes, and now that we have that right arm gone on this mech, we have pretty decent chances of landing CT shots, it looks like at least one. Uh, also some fire coming in on the head and the left side of, yeah, so a lot of scatter, but we do open up that CT and the Marauder can hopefully uh, follow suit with the Gauss and two snubs, so let's see if we can take this mech out. Building a lot of heat on the Marauder, but actually landing a head hit again those snub PPCs really uh, showing why I like that sort of uh, scattered, um, well, scattered damage. Even though, you know, the reason I love auto cannons is just because of their concentrated fire, so it's a bit of a contradiction there in terms. But, you know, the snub PPCs deal enough damage with each one of their pellets that it still ends up being uh, kind of worth it to land those hits, as opposed to, you know, landing three damage, four damage in uh, at a time isn't really enough to take anything down in one go. So uh, because our pilots, um, for those of you who watched the last episode, you will maybe be confused as to why we have great accuracy close range with these Gauss rifles, uh, but we didn't before, and that's because Decker here has good enough uh, skills that he has severely reduced minimum range. So these Gauss rifles aren't counted as being inside their minimum range because of the pilot that we have in the mech. And now we have more than enough resolve to do a precision strike. We probably should have with the Annihilator. We might have been able to kill, but now let's just go for that CT here, see if we can get it, and it doesn't look like we can. So we chew through almost half of the internal structure of that cataphract. We knock the pilot down. It might actually be worth going after um, getting pilot injuries here, depending on how much uh, CT is left. I can't imagine that mech has much left in it. Um, <laughs> and that commando just picking a fight that it is not designed to win uh, by any stretch. And the Wolverine coming in, landing a couple good hits on the Marauder, but our armor is definitely holding up um, just absolutely beautifully. So it's the Cataphract's turn. Uh, 40, yeah, okay. So this mech is not long for this world. And we actually have a nice shot uh, in with either of these two. Uh, although not if we go, yeah, okay. So we'll come over here with the Thunderbolt um, and shoot in the large laser and snub. 
at that cataphract, and I think I will go for the side torso just in case we can get lucky and... Oh, no. Okay, so that cataphract is down. Hopefully we can still get one piece from it, uh, slowly build ourselves that nice cataphract, and this kind of drives home the point that I was making before of uh, we don't have the, the pilot abilities right now to get consistently high chances to headcap these max. I mean, a 12% chance to hit is good, don't get me wrong, um, but pilots, even without the Marauder's bonus, can get up to 18%, um, or sometimes, well, no, 18%, I think, is the, uh, the natural uh, chance there um, to hit the head. And then the Marauder, if you have somebody with that Call Shot Mastery in the Marauder, they can get as high as, I think, 35% chance to hit the head. So we will come in here. I'm just hoping to get it, why not? Uh, with that Wolverine, and instead we core that mech out, and we just have a commando between us and our objective now. Although they might drop in some reinforcements, we'll have to see, and that would be within our minimum range. So let's open up <laughs> twin Gauss rifles on this poor, uh, unsuspecting commando. Um, this should just be a bit of a joke here, and I say that, but it takes both hits, initially survives, and it's actually the follow-up weaponry that finishes off that commando. So. You know, poor little guy, he did the best he could. Um, well, pour one out for all the uh, light mech fans here. And now I think we will move up the Marauder and the Thunderbolt, just in case they do drop in uh, reinforcements on that other side. And let's see if we can go ahead and take the target zone. So, sprinting up through these canyons, and we have the memory core, but the, the mission is not yet over, so either we have to roll around to next turn, uh, or there is an enemy lance, and that looks like it will be it. Uh, thank you guys all for sticking around uh, so long. Okay, so here we are, and this one, well, not a great payday, but uh, it was relatively easy, so, you know, you win some, you lose some for uh, the payout. And only 200,000, but we're building up our reserves here a little bit again. I'm, I'm less worried about the company going bankrupt, although we still don't have enough money to go on another black market shopping spree quite yet. Um, no significant damage on the lance, and we can grab, yeah, okay, so we'll grab the cataphract part, uh, we may as well grab another Zeus part, and then that is a nice medium laser, uh, that might be worth it, let's see if there's anything else down here, nope, okay, so we'll take the medium laser, this thing is just a straight upgrade, um, from any of the, uh, regular medium lasers, the plus one accuracy actually mimics a medium pulse laser pretty well there, although not for damage and not for heat. Um, and that will be it for this uh, episode. Thank you all for sticking around. Uh, please do feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll be, uh, we'll be back soon.